Hi guys, I'm Rona. Welcome back to my channel, A Girl with a Backpack. Today we are going to do a talk session, and the reason why I'm doing this is because yesterday was the end of Heisei era, followed by Emperor's Akihito's abdication. So basically, he resigned from his position and passed down his position to his son, Prince Naruhito. So from today, May 1st, 2019, it's a brand new era in Japan and it's called Leiwa. Leiwa. Today it's basically a new page in history within Japanese history. It's a new era right now. And that's very exciting and it's also very interesting to see what's going to change in the future that I've came here for four years now and uh, since 2015 which is Hey, say 27 when I first came. I've been through a lot of things. I had a lot of feelings, emotions towards Japan. Today, I think this is the best timing, best chance for me to sort of share and also elaborate that sort of ideas with you guys and also let you guys know、um, how's life in Japan in general. Without further ado, let's just jump into today's topic. So, I first came to Japan in 2015. When I was 20 years old. In a way, like when I first arrived, I came with 100% passion and 100% love for Japan. For this country that I barely know. But at that time, I thought I really, really get Japan. I thought I really understand this strange, beautiful, amazing country. So when I was growing up, back in middle school, I watched a lot. And a lot of Japanese dramas. And that sort of gave me an idea back then an idea of Japan that it's really cool. The culture is very attractive in a way that I fall in love. I've fallen in love with it. It's kind of silly to say it now, but I still remember that before I came to Japan, I actually taught all my friends、um, back home. When I came to Japan,、uh, I'm going to find a Japanese boyfriend. I want to marry a Japanese guy and I just want to become Japanese. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh.、Um, so that's me when I first came here. After I arrived, I began to realize that like, the thing that we saw in telly i s what they chose to portray to you. So the Japanese society that you saw in telly. In anime, in any media, it's just part of a giant advertisement in a way. After I got into uni, we've learned about Japanese media,、uh, Japanese society, Japanese government, and all that. Basically, we still have this ongoing project that's called. Cool Japan. So, Cool Japan, in a nutshell, is a Japanese funded program started in 2013 to promote Japanese pop culture as well as its own culture. So, they're using this as a soft power to sort of, I won't say manipulate because that's a very strong word, but in a sense, like influence on how you see from outside of Japan that you get the idea of, oh my gosh, Japan is so cool. I've met so many foreigners who just came here. All they talk about is like Akihabara, Harajuku. Tokyo, like Tokyo is always fantastic, and Kyoto is just, you know, with the temples and shrines and all that. The place with history in, in Tokyo is something like exciting, like, booming, everything is so high tech. And yeah, it is definitely true, maybe like 30% true or like 60% true, but in another sense, that Japan still has a very, very closeness. Like, Within the society, if you're an outsider, you're going to be an outsider like forever. I've been here four years now, and basically that's what I felt the most. And also, all my friends around me, all my international friends, this is the one thing that we always agree on. It's like if you're an outsider, you're going to be an outsider like forever. There's zero chance for you to fit into the, this society, which is kind of sad, but it's the harsh truth. I've learned it. the Part way. That's why now, if I look back to my 20 years o l d self and saying that I want to marry a Japanese, I want to become a Japanese, I'm definitely just going to punch her in the face. I would be like, girl, wake up. There's like 
realization in 2016 I actually decided to leave even though at first I came here all hard I was going to study in university I was going to stay here as long as I can that was my plan at first I was telling my family back home I was like hey you know what like I don't think this is for me I'm not cool with it I really don't like this place I really can't fit in I hate this place but I sort of tried to change my way of thinking went along with it I survived one year and I went into another one and now I'm still here so basically um, this four years in Japan I've went through at least two major breakups and that really really pained me I'm the sort of like this type of person that's quite emotional sometimes and to me relationship means a lot and I met this guy from the beginning when I was in Japan and he broke my heart again and again and again so basically he broke my heart three times in a way that I was already dealing with the situation with Japan that with the society that I don't feel like I fit in but at the same time also going through a breakup a very long breakup in a way that every time I look back I think even in the future if I look back for the times that I'm here in Japan it's always going to be bitterness within it it's always going to be a lot of hate situation because there's good memories and there's bad memories as well but I definitely don't regret it I think I came so far to sort of realize that I've learned a lot through this time period there's a lot of things that I could be grateful for I've came a long way to find Finally went back to my faith. I grew up as a Christian and I went to church regularly back home. Since I came to Japan, there's been a hard time for me to find a church that I really like just because even though within church everyone's really kind and really nice, but you can sort of tell there's still an invisible wall between you and Japanese people. For me, I just can't feel like they actually genuinely care about you through this past four years even though on the journey of me trying to find a church on the journey of me trying to still grab on to the faith that I have since I was a kid it has been hard it has been difficult but that's also a challenge that's also a part of the training I think and now I finally finally since last November I finally went back to the church that I've went before once and I decided to stay and I think in this past few months I've realized that that's all I got Two more years to finish my university. Two years is the time I start to really prepare myself. I've got a new um, vision. I've got a new view of this society, of this country, because I've got a new view of my own future. And that's just really exciting. And even though, like Japan definitely had hurt me. Is it too late now to say sorry? Japan is still an interesting country. It's the same thing with every country is good and bad it's not going to be black and white nothing is going to be black and white everything is gray so i think the part for me now for the rest of two years here at least i'm just going to be uh more focusing on my faith more focusing on my church community at least that's what i got at the moment so my church community is the thing that i'm going to be focusing on and then my unit basically in this new era they were that's my first with two wishes like church community and then university come to an end um, of this video i kind of just want to say thank you heisei era like i came here at the very end of heisei which is heisei 27 and i went through a lot i've grown so much i believe just as the former emperor's akihito's wishes so basically that's how I felt about Japan and that's sort of one part of my story here and I think from now on today it's a brand new era and things are going to change. Maybe not better but at least it's going to sort of gradually change into positive direction i hope you guys enjoyed this video i went on quite a while and if you do have anything that you want to say leave a comment below let me know and also if you like this video give this video a big thumbs up and rhoda i will see you guys next time bye